Hi class, today we are continuing our discussion of curve sketching and we are moving on to um, asymptotes. Sorry, I'm getting my camera a bit better. Is that, how does that look? <laughs> Let me check. Um, yeah, so I'll be honest with you, today is mostly a review um, of asymptotes. What, what you learned in advanced functions is great. It is a great foundation. Um, today, really, the only addition is just using some limit notation to find and talk about asymptotes. So that's going to be the biggest difference. So hopefully you still carry that knowledge with you from advanced functions. Um, so asymptotes are among the special features of rational functions, and they play a significant role in curve sketching. Okay, the concept of limits and therefore derivatives help in finding and sketching asymptotes. So a rational function um, has a vertical asymptote at x equals c um, if q at c equals 0, but p at c does not equal 0. So in other words, it makes the denominator 0, but not the numerator. Okay, so these are infinite limit statements that are true. So if all of these are x equals c, okay, all of these asymptotes I drew so expertly, <laughs> um, then we can say that uh, the limit as x approaches c from the negative side, from the left side, um, equals infinity. So that would be a vertical asymptote that looks like this. From the left side equaling negative infinity would be a vertical approaching the vertical asymptote like that. Okay, then the limit as x approaches c from the positive side equaling positive infinity means it's approaching the right side like that. And then equaling negative infinity means it's approaching the right side but going to negative infinity. So note that since infinity is not a limit, these limits technically do not exist, but we use the notation for convenience. So let's take a look at this uh, rational function and talk about the end behavior, sorry, the vertical asymptotes and the behavior near those vertical asymptotes. So in order to find vertical asymptotes, we need to find the values of x that make the denominator um, equal to zero. So we need to factor. So that's x plus two, x minus one. So therefore x equals negative two, negative 2 and x equals 1 are vertical asymptotes okay note that they don't make the denom the numerator 0 okay so uh, we know that they're not holes all right so determine the behavior to the left and to the right of all vertical asymptotes by testing the values of the function on either side so first we're going to look at x approaching the first asymptote negative 2 from the left side, so from the negative side. So let's think about what is happening in the function there. So the x value will be negative. Um, negative two, something less than negative two plus two will be negative. Something less than negative two minus one will also be negative. So you end up with a negative over a positive, which is overall a negative. So we can say that on this side of the function, the function is approaching negative infinity. Now we look at how x approaches negative 2 from the right or from the positive side. So those are numbers just slightly above negative 2. So x will still be negative, but now x plus 2 will creep up into the positives and x minus 1 will be negative. So you get a negative over a negative, which is an overall positive. So on this side of the asymptote, the function is approaching positive infinity. Okay, so that's the first asymptote. Now let's look at one. So what happens as x approaches one from the left-hand side? What is the, going on with the function? Well, your x value will be positive. Uh, your x plus two will be positive, but your x minus one will be negative. Since it's slightly less than one, that will go down into the negative. So you get a positive over a negative, which is a negative. So the function is approaching negative infinity on that side, it's terrible. That's a negative infinity on that side of the asymptote. Oh, Chani, I mean, this is means. Okay, how about how x is approaching one from the right-hand side? Well, then the function will be positive here, positive, positive. Uh, so that will be positive. So f at x will be approaching positive infinity on the other side of that asymptote. 
Okay, so if you find space here in your note to draw like just a little, just super baseline sketch. So if here's negative two, and here's one, then we can show just the behavior. So on this side, so it's going here and here, and then here and here. Okay, so we know the behavior around the vertical asymptotes. All right, let's move on to horizontal asymptotes. So we learned a lot about this in advanced functions, but now we're going to talk about it in terms of limits. Okay, so consider rational functions as x increases without bound in both positive and negative directions. In other words, the limit as x approaches positive infinity of f at x and the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f at x. As this happens, if the limit approaches a number, there is a horizontal asymptote there. So for example, the limit as x approaches positive infinity of 1 over x uh, what happens? So x gets huge, 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 huge. So this is a positive number, but it's approaching zero from the top. Okay, so that would be something like, well, we know what it looks like, this section. So notice as x approaches positive infinity, uh, the function is approaching zero uh, from the positive side. And then we can also look at the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 1 over x. And that gives us zero from the negative. So like that. So it's approaching zero from below. Okay, so if the limit as x approaches infinity, negative or positive, um, equals a number L, then that line is the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so writing polynomials, uh, this is a little trick, a new calculus trick here. Um, so we know our rules about like top heavy, bottom heavy, or even degree from advanced functions, but we're going to formalize it a bit now using limits. So notice this quadratic function can be rewritten by factoring out the highest degree factor. So how do you get from this to this? Well, when you take the limit as x approaches infinity, of this function written in this way. So x squared one plus four over x plus one over x squared. So when you're taking this limit, watch what happens. So four over x, as x approaches infinity, that's gonna approach zero. And then this is going to approach zero. So you end up with just x squared. So technically, um, this is approaching infinity. Um, it's not approaching a specific number, so this would have no horizontal asymptote, which we know it's a, it's a quadratic function. So let's take a look at what that looks like when there is a horizontal asymptote. Okay, so we know from our work in advanced functions that it's just going to be 2, but let me show you with limits how that works. So the function 2x minus 3 over x plus 1 can be rewritten so that we're factoring out the term with highest degree. So we factor out a 2x, and then what's left is 1 minus 3 over 2x. And then on the bottom, we factor out an x, so what's left is 1 plus 1 over x. So then that can be further reduced to 2, 1 minus 3 over 2x, over just 1 plus 1 over x. Okay, so now we're going to take the limit of this rewritten statement. So the limit as x approaches infinity, so we'll do positive infinity here, of 2, 1 minus 3 over 2x over 1 plus 1 over x. So now we are able to easily see that as this approaches infinity, this, will, this fraction will approach 0. Sorry, this, by the way, should have been 3 over 2x. That x shouldn't be written. It's not a coefficient. It's 3 divided by 2x. And this 1 over x will approach 0. So the whole thing will approach 2. Now think about it. Is it from the top or from the bottom? Well, you just think about whether these would be positive or negative. Okay, and we can do some more work with that um, um, later. So you're just thinking, well, we can do it now too. So you're just thinking um, this approaching 0 
okay? Is it approaching zero from the top or from the bottom? Okay, three over two X, so one minus three over two X, that's from the top, and that's from the top, so it would be from above, okay? And you can do the same thing for approaching negative X, sorry, negative infinity. Okay, so, sorry, I forgot to make the conclusion there. The question was, find this limit. Oh, we did find a limit. But, so then that concludes that Y equals 2 is a horizontal asymptote since the limit is approaching an actual number and not a function as X grows extremely large. Examine the horizontal asymptote here. Okay, so again, we know because it's the ratio of the leading coefficients, that's three over two, but limits just allow us to better show why this is true, okay? So we know that it's three over two, okay? But let's consider um, why this is true with the limit. So you can pause the video and practice this using this factoring out method. Okay, or you can just watch me do it. <laughs> so the limit as x approaches infinity. So, okay, we factored out a 3x and a 2x so that three, the x's will cancel off. So you get 3, 1 plus 5 over 3x. And then 2, uh, 1 minus 1 over 2x. And again, you did factor out the x's, but I already canceled them off. And so these go to zero, so that's why you're just left with three over two. So the question is, how does it approach it? Well, basically the best way is you can just put in large numbers and see if it's above or below three over two. So this gives you um, 3,005 divided by 1999, which if you turn into a fraction, you'll notice that, or sorry, a decimal, you'll see it's greater than one and a half, so it's greater than three over two. And if you put in a really negative number, you can test that. That gives you minus 2995 over minus 2001. And that is less than three over two. So um, basically you can draw just a brief sketch of root here. Um, so that means with your asymptote of three over two, it'll approach it from above here and from below over here. Okay. So the next example is just a wide open example where they want us to find all of the asymptotes, okay? So we can note, again, this is a bottom heavy function. The denominator can be factored. So let's go ahead and factor the denominator first. So you have three X all over. So what multiplies to negative six and adds to negative one. So that's X minus three, X plus two. So our vertical asymptotes then are x equals negative 2 and x equals 3. So we need to then find the behavior on either side of these asymptotes. So we want to find the behavior as x approaches negative 2 from the left, x approaches negative 2 from the right, x approaches 3 from the left, and x approaches 3 from the right. And we're looking at the function. So again, it's easiest just to kind of look at each of the factors and fill in if it's negative or positive under each condition. So here we'll have a positive numerator, then that will be negative and negative. Did I say positive numerator? I meant negative. So negative over a positive gives an overall negative there. So it's approaching negative infinity on that side. Then here, uh, you, uh, your numerator would still be negative. X minus three is negative, but now X plus two is positive. So here we have F at X is approaching positive infinity. Negative over negative is positive. Okay, here we have uh, positive on the numerator now, but X minus three on this side of three is uh, negative. And then this will be positive. So overall you have that it's approaching negative infinity on that side of three. And then on this side of three, everything will be positive. So you have that the function is approaching positive infinity. So notice in this pattern, it switches negative, positive, negative, positive. So you might be tempted to assume that that always happens. It doesn't. So make sure you do go through the work to test it each time. Okay, so now let's test the horizontal asymptotes. 
Okay, so uh, the limit uh, as x approaches infinity. Okay, so we have our function. So we take out the x and we're left with 3. And on the bottom, we take out the x squared and we're left with 1 minus 1 over x minus 6 over x squared. Okay, so then that is the limit as x approaches infinity of 3 over x bracket 1 minus 1 over x minus 6 over x squared. So this goes to 0. This goes to 0. So you're left with the limit um, as x goes to infinity of 3 over x, okay, which is zero. Okay, so then you can test the behavior from above and from below by putting in large numbers like f at a thousand and f at negative a thousand or any really large numbers and see what's happening. Okay, so our horizontal asymptote is at y equals zero. We have vertical asymptotes at x equals negative two and x equals positive three. Okay, and we can draw the behavior. So we know it's approaching this from below, this down here, this up here, this down here, this up here, and this down there. Okay, so we have analyzed all of the behavior. Finally, we get two oblique asymptotes. So again, um, oblique asymptotes occur when the numerator is exactly one degree higher than the degree of the denominator. So first of all, let's find the vertical asymptote, okay? So that is just x equals negative one. Make sure you check that it does not make the numerator zero, which it does not in this case. Okay, we know from our working functions that there is no horizontal asymptote, but I do wanna use limits to show you why that's true. So the limit as x approaches infinity, so again, we factor out the degree, the highest term degree, so you're left with 1 plus, um, sorry, 3 over 2x minus 1 over 2x squared, okay, and then on the bottom you take out an x and you're left with 1 plus 1 over x, okay, so then that gives you the limit as x approaches infinity, okay, the x's cross off, so you have 2x 1 plus 3 over 2x minus 1 over 2x squared divided by 1 plus 1 over x. So this goes to 0, this goes to 0, that all goes to 0. So you're left with the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x, which is equal to infinity. So there's no horizontal asymptote because that limit is not reaching a number, it's reaching infinity. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to use a different color to find the oblique asymptote. So to do this, we need to use a polynomial division to rewrite our function in a different way that allows us to, to explain this limit. So we have 2x squared plus 3x minus 1 divided by x plus 1. So 2x squared divided by x is 2x. Multiply down, you get 2x squared plus 2x. Now we need to subtract, we get x, bring down the negative one. x divided by x is plus one, multiply down. And we subtract, we're left with a remainder of negative two. So this function can be rewritten as, uh, with a product statement, x plus one. Um, sorry, I don't mean it that way. So you could rewrite the product statement but then you'd have to divide it by x plus one. So the function can be rewritten as two x plus one, and then plus negative two over x plus one. There we go. Okay, so as x approaches infinity, we can see that the limit of this function, it will approach two x plus one, since this will go away. So this is your oblique asymptote.
Okay, so now we have an algorithm for curve sketching so far. Um, so now we can get to really sketching a lot and get finding a lot about our curves which with what we learned in the first three lessons. So here we go, it's seven steps. We're going to be adding just a couple things over the next day or so. So check for any discontinuities in the domain first. Determine if there are vertical asymptotes and then the direction from which the curve approaches these asymptotes. Then you find the intercepts any critical points. You use the first derivative test to determine the type of critical points. Um, and then you test end behavior by looking at horizontal and oblique asymptotes. You construct an interval of increase and decrease table, and we sketch the curve. So keep this algorithm out. Sometimes you don't need to do absolutely every single step to get a good, a good sketch. We can talk in class about what is expected as the bare minimum. Um, for it to be a complete sketch. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you learned lots.